Hello, good day, and welcome to Encouragement and Prayer Ministries. I want to thank you for watching the video and sharing the video with your family and your friends so together we can be an encouragement to others and together we can share the gospel. Today I want to read from Mark chapter 10 verses 46 to 52. Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples, a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, stand up, he is calling you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And answering him, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. In this story, we see Jesus was with his disciples as they were leaving Jericho. And as they were leaving, there was a blind man who was distressed. He was hurting. He was just sitting by himself. But he knew Jesus was coming. He cried out for mercy, for God, for Jesus to help him. In his blindness, it made him distressed. In his distress, hearing Jesus was on the way, he wanted help. Being blind, he could not run to Jesus. Sitting, he did the only thing he could do. He cried out for mercy. Crying out. He's distressed. He's having difficulty. No way to take care of himself. No support of others. He's probably hurting physically, physically in pain. He had an emotional pain. But he knew Jesus could give him mercy. He asked for compassion. The people gave him none. Only Jesus could give him mercy. He recognized Jesus' authority. to give mercy and compassion. We're going to see with the response of the people. They told him to be quiet. They did not know his hurt and his distress. The people showed no mercy. They were merciless. But Jesus stopped and called out the man. There are people around you that are in distress and are hurting. 
They are crying out for help. They may be crying out loud, like this blind man. Or they may be crying in silently. Are you one of those that tells them to be quiet? Are you one who wants to encourage them to go to Jesus? Let us look at Romans chapter 10, verses 17 and verse 14, to know what our response to those who are in distress and are hurting. What should we be doing? In verse 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And verse 14, how then will they call on him whom they have not believed? How will they believe in whom in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? It is clear we need to tell others about Jesus. Those who are hurting need to hear that Jesus loves them. We need to tell them that he was looking for them. They need to know that they can cry out to, to God, they can cry out to Jesus who will give them mercy, will show compassion. Our response dictates what those who, who those around us who are hurting, what they will do. They can, if we sit and do nothing, and tell them to be quiet, they will go to the grave without Jesus. Or when we tell them about Jesus, they hear about, they hear his word, and they believe in him. They can receive Jesus. They receive compassion. They receive mercy. They receive God's love. Today, Look for those who are hurting, your family and your friends. Tell them about Jesus. Save them from death so they can have everlasting life. Lord, I know somebody needs to hear this they are hurting, they are crying out for help, they need to hear the gospel message, send someone to them that they trust and love, to preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That through receiving you as their Lord and Savior, they will find compassion, they will find mercy, they will have the love that surpasses all, over, all other love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to give you the opportunity today, right now, if you are hurting and distressed, if you are wanting compassion and mercy, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, who will give you what you are looking for, perfect love, mercy, 
and compassion. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that he died for you, for your sins, you can ask for forgiveness, confessing them to the Father. Just pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that the separation between us is because of my sin. I confess that I have sinned and have fallen far short of your glory. I thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus, to pay the penalty for my sin. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that he raised that you were raised from the dead. I am sorry for my sins and I ask you to forgive and cleanse me. I want to turn away from everything the Bible calls sin and receive Jesus as my Lord, Master, and Savior. Help me to love, serve, and obey you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I also want to encourage you that you, when you pray this prayer, that you don't just receive Jesus as your Savior, but you receive him as your Lord. And as you have made him your Lord, you begin to walk with him, to read the Bible, to know more about him and his love, and to imitate Christ, and to become a true Christian and to pray with him and listen to what he has to say as, that he says to you as he teaches you and as the Holy Spirit teaches you to live the life that you are supposed to live that is pure, holy, and sinless.